Metal Gear Solid 2 tutorial at 100 subs. There we go. <coughs> Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to start off with is two high jump kicks. Now, immediately after, the reason why I had mentioned the different jump arc that we can do is you see, if we do a high jump kick, that's actually going to cause lag immediately on pink stage, right? We don't want that. There's two things that can happen. You either get the kicks and blow the thing up, you grab onto it. It's just all bad, right? So immediately after doing our first two jump kicks, you're gonna hold forward, and when you start doing your jumping attack, you wanna switch to holding down so that we don't do any damage on this first tree right here. And again, you'll see, we hold up forward and do jump kicks, it's just no good, it slows us down, it's all kinds of bad. If we do the downward kicks like we need, we get past it all good. An alternative that you can do here is a standing slide and continue your jump kicks. Now coming up, you'll see you have these bird-like enemies, right? A big thing that is worth note is if you do not get the item that you want, jump kick them. Jump kicks make them drop more items, so you get an option. If you're starting on pink stage, this is going to be the enemy that you are going to be either getting the weapon you want or resetting on. You'll see here that we are looking for green. Hitting down and shoot will grab items that are on the ground. This is for weapons and for health drop. Also, good point from Jim SR in chat. Uh, weapon birds can give you up to three weapons with physical attacks. Four if a soldier destroys it. All right, so we're going to grab the uh, chaser weapon to get flame chaser. And then from there, we're going to do one normal forward kick followed by an up forward kick. And that will get us on the path that we want to be on. And then two straight forward kicks will fall off both the potato sacks. And then you'll see we're going to get to our first sub boss. This game, just like a lot of Konami games, is uh, notorious for sub bosses. Very, very similar to things uh, such as Castlevania Bloodlines and Contra Hardcore. The reason behind that is um, the team Konami actually went from Konami to working with Treasure. They actually opened up their own game studio. They hated the way the games industry was going currently at the time and decided they wanted to do things themselves. A big part of that was Nintendo treating them, their employees like shit. And treated the Kudabi team like shit, so they decided they don't want to do it. That's why you don't see a lot of treasure releases on those platforms. So continuing to move to the right, our first Phantom is going to come in. Phantoms are these enemies that they're kind of like souped up versions of this dude you're going to see on screen right here, just little soldier boys. Now there's there's two things that we can do. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah. So what we just showed off there is you do one high jump kick. The high jump kick, uh, if the enemy doesn't get forced into iframes, will actually instantly kill the phantom, right? As Saul here. He's going to blow up and grab the heart piece, be able to continue on. Now, if you don't want to rely on that, simply because of the jump, the jump's going to happen 99% of the time, right? They can either throw a bomb or jump. The jump on this enemy happens all of the time. You know, a simple flame chaser also works. See how he hits iframes? That's why this strat is not consistent. You can go for it. You can. But if you don't get the iframes and he gets out, it just it takes a little bit to kill him. Now, I don't personally have a method for getting him not to trigger iframes. It just seems to go, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and Jim can correct me on this, I believe it happens if the uh, phantom enemy initiates a jumping attack at you, they are able to be hit without being instantly triggered into iframes. This is going to be a thing throughout the rest of the run on these phantom enemies that we encounter. Honestly, actual comparison, if done by a task, weapon kill is faster than the melee kill by 23 frames. With that knowledge from Jim, don't go for this. Don't go for the attack. There's no reason to. If it's faster, just bop that boy. Moving on, we're gonna grab the health, and then moving on, we're gonna get immediately into another sub boss. For this next sub boss, you'll see I do one high jump kick, and then I start shooting the flame. One thing worth note here that was actually told to me by Dagrin is this enemy takes damage before his boss vitality pops up. And so the most optimal way we're going to go about that is once we've landed in place, get lined up in the stock of the beanstalk. And then once we get up, we're gonna wanna go left and right. If done fast enough, you'll see that the boss actually takes damage on every available frame. Easy peasy, right? The only reason I like to high jump on this transition is just because it gets me into the position that I want to ideally be in faster. It's not needed. If you want to go easy, you can just you can just take that little baby jump and then just walk forward and then start shooting. 
This is simply muscle memory, guys. There is no right or wrong way to go about 90% of these strats, by the way. That's why we're going to be showing off multiple routes and for multiple different levels of speed running. On this transition, there's two things we can do here. Instant jump kick, and as you'll see, if done early enough, really doesn't cause a lot of lag on that first enemy. Or we can do what I like to do, which is a standing slide and then my movement. Either way works, guys. I like to do the standing slide here. And like we talked about before, standing slide does damage to enemies, does physical damage. So on these guys, they're giving you some trouble. I'm going to start off with standing slides here. So there's going to be two different methods of going about this next screen. If you start with standing slides, five standing slides. Three, four, five. It's going to leave you right here at this little potato sack. If not, jump kicks. Once you get here, though, make sure to do just normal size jump kicks until this tree. The reason why this is important is because if you start holding up forward on this section, nine times out of ten, folks, you're going to get up there, you're going to do a little bit of physical damage to that thing, you're going to try to get here, right? It's just messy. So the route we're trying to go is bottom route always. Well, not always, but for, for a majority of the run, that's going to be where you want to be. We just do our normal jump kicks. And see, that's another reason why top route can be beneficial. There's little jerks. They're RNG. Sometimes they kick you. Sometimes they jump attack you. Sometimes they throw you. Now, as previously stated, if you're going for the normal jump method here, on the last tree, do downward kicks so you don't do any damage to it. If you continue to do normal jump kicks, you will blow that up every time and cause yourself lag frames that you honestly don't want. This phantom is the exact same as the first phantom. You have two options. You can melee attack if you want for just momentum if that's easier for you, or you can fire. I'm going to try to show off both. And so there's the flame method. There we go, and there's the physical damage method. Also another thing worth noting is whenever you kill the phantoms, any extra enemies you have on stage will instantly just die. And so if you're worried about a lot of things around you, if you know that these are gonna die super duper quick, just, just get them out of there. So here, you're gonna see that we have this pyramid section coming up, right? Now you'll notice with just regular jumps, on every other jump, you're probably gonna get walled, right? You're not gonna get what you want. So from this screen, you need normal jump kicks, and you want to stay consistent with those. Sometimes here, if you move too quickly on this section and get ahead of yourself, you'll actually jump down. Hold right for just a little bit. You're going to want to delay your first jump kick. You'll notice that we then get lined up against this first little brick right here that loads on screen. So delay your first jump kick, get lined up, and then just start mashing those puppies. And if done correctly, you land on that top brick and get transitioned into our next enemy. Once we got to the top and have stopped your momentum, you'll see the screen transitions. And we're going to be moved on into uh, another mini boss. Another thing worth noting that I haven't brought up yet. You'll see we get text on screen like this. It says boss is approaching Bravo Man, right? Action. If you want to get through that, just hold shoot. Flame Chaser users, one thing worth noting. It is good once you start shooting to keep your thing moving. Because if not, because of the uh, chaser, it's going to go to whatever enemy is currently on the screen. Sometimes it'll just fly off, sometimes it stays in place, and then as you see, since it already is triggering something lower than us, it's not going to attack it. As you'll see here, doing standing slides or jumping attacks is not faster on this guy. Because if you can see his health appear, you've taken too long. Bravo Man's a joke, simply start your flame, keep it left or right in him, his health's going to appear for seconds and then he blows up. This is the hardest trick on the run guys. It takes a whole lot to attempt. You're gonna simply stay on that left side of the screen. You're gonna hit absolutely nothing. You're gonna call a loved one. You know, you even talk to your mom in forever. You can talk to your grandmother. Pick up the phone. Give them a call. They miss you and they love you and I know you've had whatever you've gone through with them but it's gonna be okay. And then yeah, that's all we do for this shit. We get on screen, start holding right. You can go to the bottom. You can jump off of here to be cool. Now, the strut that I do here, I'm pretty sure it's faster because there's one thing you want to keep in mind. So you'll see we have this enemy that comes out. I'm just going to sit here and let him do this thing real quick. That's actually the arm from the pink robo that we're going to be fighting here in just a moment. It can pop out of the background, all these little holes. If you hit it, it does physical damage to it the entire time, which doesn't actually benefit the boss. There's bees that hit you here. There's, there's a whole lot of bad, right? 
Once you get up to the right hand side of the screen here, start doing standing slides. Eight standing slides will get you into the boss room. Alternatively, one full jump kick, eight standing slides. That moves us fast enough that we don't have to wait on that boss. You'll see as soon as that last arm comes out, the enemies will be spawning. We're going to hit the first two and then go for the third. That's going to be the fastest way every single time. The third enemy can't actually explode and take damage until he's touched the ground. The other two will touch this platform, allowing them to be damaged. As soon as all three enemies that are on uh, stage have been defeated, we will transition to the next boss. I like to stand right here. You're going to see we have this little bush in the background. You're going to see this uh, big part of the tree. It's another good way you can line yourself up. I like to get on the left-hand side where my hair is overlapping. The two little curvatures, almost like the butt cheeks of it. Boss is coming in. Remember to mash, uh, hold that text down. We're going to do that every single time we have boss text. Uh, I'm going to wait until the enemy... You'll see there's a bit of oscillation. It's going to go up. It's going to go down, and then it's going to jump to the right. Once it's jumped to the right, we'll do a full jump kick to the right, followed by another full jump kick to the right. If you go too fast there, you'll end up under the enemy. That's why I like to position myself where I do. And then I give it just a little bit of time on that second jump kick to get up on top of the enemy. So again, one jump kick from our position. Wait. Second jump kick to get up on top of this leg here. This is all RNG right here. Uh, well, the only thing that's really RNG, I guess we'll transition in. You'll see this enemy comes out and starts shooting. Sometimes he can shoot at our little Gunstar hero. Sometimes he doesn't. We're gonna hope that he doesn't shoot. So what I'm gonna recommend you do on this fight, and this is, again, all dependent on RNG, is one high jump kick, followed into two standing slides. If he starts shooting it, after your first standing slide, you can just go into two crouching slides. Reason for that being that if you get hit by the shot, it's actually going to cancel your damage from standing slide and make you initiate another one. If you were to instantly initiate another standing slide, he shoots again, you will be shot again. While you are jump kicking, you are invincible. As long as the jump kick has been initiated, if you get the RNG and it's good, three standing slides is going to be uh, 26 frames faster than if we were to go for jump kicks. So safest method, up kicks. Up kicks are invincible, your jumping physical attacks are invincible. If he shoots you, you can actually go through the shots. That's safest method. Fastest method, three standing slides. How much more fast is it? 26 frames. I'm not the one who makes the rules, Jim is. Once we finish the boss, you're not done yet with tech on this stage. You're going to see here, again, we have these bushes that are in the background, right? We lose control when we actually grab the gem itself. And so what I like to do is, before this first stage clear text appears, is get lined up exactly here in the background. His head would be just lined up with the left-hand side of the bush. I stand exactly here. Sadly, there's no way to speed up the stage clear or the item gem, the only way to make it faster is not having to move. You will see that's a pixel perfect position for your character to crouch down, grab the gem, and transition on into our next stage. Kai!